Hello, and welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geek at Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller, and we're going to be continuing on with this um, mini tutorial for modeling a car. There is no way that uh, in just one or two 20 minute tutorials we could be done and, and finished with it, at least not in any competent manner. So um, we're going to finish setting up our modeling planes here. I'm going to just take the back one and move it out of the way. I'm going to focus on the front and back here first. So I'm going to take the front one and move it over. Now here's why I spent some time in Photoshop. If you look down here at these at the lines that I drew, I want to match them up uh, with this front image. I want to match their lines up with the ones on the bottom. Now admittedly I was not uh, as careful unfortunately as I could have been uh, because some of the lines don't line up exactly. And that's my fault. I didn't zoom in close enough and and uh, draw over my guidelines as precisely as I could. But uh, one saving grace is I know I did do a good job with the center one so I will line the center ones up. If this were a perfect world these would have lined up as well but oh well okay so I like the front one and now I'm just gonna move it back out of the way because because uh, I know the model that we create will extend to the front edge of this bottom diagram so I know I want my front one completely out of the way now let's come into selecting our rear one adjust the horizontal alignment and I'm just looking at uh, this area right here making sure these two line up and that looks good now I'm going to bring this back one in and let's see where this will line up Okay, the front of it is lined up with the front of the car. Let's move this back one out of the way. And the back one is lined up with the back of the car. So this one is done. Let's move it out of the way. The only thing left is the front and back, moving them up and down, aligning them vertically, because I don't think they will be uh, aligned right. Let me see. Hold on get rid of my dynamic geometry yeah okay so I'll grab this back one and I will move it down now because I have this blue border here let me move it in a little bit okay now I was sloppy in Photoshop I should have drawn another one here for the top but I didn't uh, fortunately I do have one for the bottom of the chassis and so that is a little bit of a saving grace there okay that one is lined up vertically and horizontally I'll move that out of the way now let's work on this the front image and we will be done with this boring setup but you gotta spend some time where time definitely needs to be spent otherwise you uh, you're really starting off uh, with a handicap unless you uh, set these up precisely or at least as precisely as you can okay that's good now let me move that out of the way now this might sound strange but believe it or not the uh, the vertical alignment of these um, really doesn't matter they can be up here they can be down there it's not all that precise and it, or it's not uh, important to be all that precise so there I'm just gonna set them right here I could set them up there or I could set them down there it really doesn't matter but I'm just gonna set it down there I'm going to select all of them and group them together call this blueprints and I'm going to lock it in place so I don't accidentally move it. Okay, so we've got all of our modeling planes set up so we can 
uh, start doing some fun stuff, some accurate modeling. Now, one of the first things I want to do is yours will not look like this. Yours will probably look like, uh, let me select one of these. Yours will probably look like, um, like this. One of the first things I want to do to give myself the uh, every uh, uh, the best opportunity I can is I need to adjust my lighting conditions so that I don't have all these shadows and dark spots on my projection planes or my blueprint planes as I rotate this around. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to select this first lighting condition, and that gives me. Uh, a pretty good uh, visibility of my blueprints. Next, I want to change the color of my blueprints all the way to white, and I'm going to take my specularity and notice the difference when I move it all the way up. It makes it really bright. Now as I rotate around, you don't have those dark spots, or at least not as much. So now that my um, lighting conditions are set up. I'm going to change to a front view, which is right over here, now to a full view, and I'm going to create a cube. A uh, cube, here it is. And I'm just going to size it to the prox uh, exact size of my blueprint. And at this early stage, it's not overly critical that it is absolutely perfect. There will be room for flexibility uh, to make some changes as we go along. Oh, oops. Oops. Okay, let's check. Let's go to a perspective view, and let's see. Now we need to change to a top view, and drag it out a little bit. Again, those blue lines really make it easy to see the dimensions of my model. And back to perspective. Let's change to a, I don't know, rear view. Hide the back. And that matches. I guess it could come over just a hair. Okay, there we are. Come back to perspective. Okay, that looks good. Now what I want to do with my uh, car, or my cube enabled, I want to create a color for it. And I want to stay away from red because, uh, so at least the way I have my color set up, whenever I select a face, it's automatically red. Well, I want to stay away from naturally coloring it red so that I can uh, have a better idea on looking at my model and knowing what is selected and what isn't. So maybe if I come over uh, to a green, that should be good. And now I'm going to add a good deal of uh, transparency to it. Reason for this is uh, if I am subdividing and working on uh, my car, I can still see the blueprints behind it. So I like that. I'll quickly save that. Now I'm going to hide this for a minute. If you've seen some of my other tutorials, uh, I did a tutorial on creating a garbage can. And I just want to briefly touch upon some of the points um, in this tutorial that I did in the garbage can tutorial. And that is, again, looking at our blueprints, I want to take in consideration the various characteristics of this model so that I can start off 
accurately subdividing my cube so it will give me the best chance to duplicate this uh, out of my cube. So I want to look at where I need my subdivisions to be. Well, I know this is a wheel well, so I'm going to need a subdivision of my cube at the front of the wheel well, at the back of the wheel well. Here is where the windshield starts sloping up, so I'll need one here. I'll need one here at the top of the windshield. I'll need one for the, cre for the front of the door. I'll need one for the back of the door. I'll need one here for the front of the back wheel well, this the back of the back wheel well, and I'll probably need some another one here and another one here, but I'm not going to add these two here just yet. Uh, I've learned it's always easier to add more subdivisions than to remove, uh, and the fewer um, uh, the, the, the less complex your model is, the easier it is to start roughing it out, uh, start creating the global shape of your model. You can always add intricate details later on. So I want to keep my model at this stage as simple as possible. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay, I want eight along this side. Now let's change to a top view. And let's consider what we will need for this. Um, well, I know I'll need one there. I'll need one there. And... Uh, probably need one there. Now the front of the wheel well is going to be here, here, and actually, you know what? Uh, the n I don't even need to do this because um, what I create in the front will be duplicated on the top. So that was kind of a waste of time. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. No, I don't want the rear view. I want a, let's go to a right view. There we are. And I'll hide the back. Now let's see how many we'll need here. Uh, definitely need one across the top of the, the hood and at the top of the bumper, bottom of the bumper, because the bumper will be sticking out. And so that's one, two, three. And let's come to back to a perspective view. And let's start adding some subdivisions right now before we uh, analyze any more. So, um, I'm going to kill the transparency. Now I do know I will need to cut it down the half, cut it down the middle, so I'll go tessellation by slice, hold down my shift key, and there we are. A nice slice down the middle. Re-enable the transparency a little bit. I guess I do need to keep that on. Uh, come to a front view. There we are. Okay, let's grab my tessellation by slice. And let's put one... I'm going to hold down... Uh, not hold down shift. I'm going to put one here for the front of the wheel well, back of the wheel well, crease of the door, here for the front of the... where the windshield slopes up, here for the top of the windshield, here for the back of the door, here for the um, wheel well, another one for the wheel well. I like that. Let's change to a rear, rear view, or a right view, that's fine. I'll just hide. No, I won't. I guess this will be good. Let me see. The back is already hidden. Okay. Uh, we've got a slice already down the middle. What I will need is right here where the hood ends and starts sloping down. I'll need one here and another one here. So, tessellation by slice. Oh, I could have done better than that. Let's abort that. Let's try that again. There we are. And another one right here on that line. Actually, if you look at my blue line, it kind of shows me where um, where I needed to add that one. 
And that's good. I'll validate that. Let's come back to a perspective view. Now let me hide my blueprints. And let's see what we've got. Okay, we still need to add some lines across here. So let's come back. Come to a front view, front. Okay, let's see what we need to do here. Well, we definitely got to cut the top of the car and the top of the wheel wells. And that's all I'm going to add for that right now. I can always add more later. So, uh, enable our car, tessellation by slice. I want one right up here and I'll just place it right on that blue guideline that I painted. There we are. And right here for the top of the wheel wells, I will create another one. That looks good. Okay, validate that. Let's come into perspective view. And I think we are ready to start modeling. Let me save that. I'm going to hide my blueprints now. Because uh, we are creating a symmetrical model, I'm only going to um, model half of it. And we will let the symmetrical tool model the other half for, create the other half of the car for us. So I can delete this entire half of my car. So I'm going to select those and just delete them. And that one there. So I've only got half of a car. Now if we enable our blueprints, one thing we want to do is come to a top view and I'm going to go into point, I'm going to re-enable the transparency, bring that up, select all of these points, and zoom in. I want to make sure that the center of my car is in the center of my blueprints. And it needs to come up a little bit. So let me just zoom in. Okay. There we are. Now we've got our car where it needs to be. And this is why I'm only modeling half because, let me hide my blueprints, I'll hit my symmetric tool and you will see that it will create the other half of the car for us as we start working through this. See, it creates a whole separate piece for us. And that's what model, symmetrical modeling is pretty much all about. Um, so I'm going to stop it here. We will continue on with this tutorial in a third one. So. Um, this, as I said, uh, I believe I said earlier, this will be an ongoing tutorial series as we slowly work through this and create our automobile. So thanks for watching here at Geek at Play Studios. Uh, my name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.